The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Welcome, Sweaty and Piss listeners. This is Karen Nickel, family nurse practitioner, and I am here with the lovely, talented, hysterical Leanne Morgan. Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, um, we have a question today from a Facebook listener. Well, a listener who put the question on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, and the question is from Sherry. And she said, hello, I love your podcast. I listen to several a day since I have an outrageous commute to work. I'm sorry about that. I I know it. I have a question for you. After researching the impact of caffeine on inflammation, I searched for a coffee alternative. I found a mushroom-based alternative that I am in love with. Can you address caffeine and its impact on acidity and inflammation? Also, can you add information on mushroom-based coffee alternatives and the impact mushrooms have on focus and the brain? Thank you. She, uh, Sherry didn't mention what the product is that she's in love with, but um, maybe we yeah, can... Yeah, Sherry, girl. Um, <laughs> Come on. When you're... Yeah, <laughs> just, cough it up, just sister. message us yeah, <laughs> and tell us... And when you get out of the car, message us. Tell us. Because now I'm, I'm curious. I want to know what she's in love with. I know. Um, well, and if you're in love with that, and it, you're doing well on a substitute, a mushroom substitute for your coffee, that's fantastic. And uh, But I do want to address your questions. Do you, do you, Leanne, do you drink much caffeine in a day? No, I I drink it in the morning. I have a couple of cups of coffee, and then I try not to drink it during the day because I stay up at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so um, interestingly, she's asking about caffeine and inflammation, and um, specifically speaking about coffee versus just caffeine products, but coffee in particular there are several compounds in coffee that are really potent antioxidants. So they actually, coffee itself actually has an inflammation reducing property. I think that sort of might Thank surprise the Lord. people. <laughs> Thank the Lord. I mean, I love it. I've loved it since I was in kindergarten. My mom would make me a little cup of coffee. She'd say, she'd talk, baby talk to me, and she'd go, Do you want some coffee? And um, she'd pour half milk and a half coffee. And I'd sit up there and drink the coffee before I went to kindergarten. And I've drank it ever since. I love it. <laughs> I didn't start quite that early, but I come from a long line of serious coffee drinkers. And um, I think I started drinking coffee at about age 12. And uh, I remember Forrest at about age 12 said, can I have a cup of coffee? And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is genetic. What's happening here? But um, anyway, so there are definitely families of coffee drinkers and i think there is a definitely a social component to that too you know it's nice to have a cup of coffee with somebody else so oh it is it's wonderful i love it and and remember in terms of the caffeine question that decaffeinated coffee contains the same antioxidant compounds so if you want to skip the caffeine you can still get the antioxidant benefit from coffee so That's just, anyway, so, um, you know, and just sort of looking at statistics, it was interesting to me that um, approximately 90% of all adults in the world consume caffeine daily. What? Does that surprise you? That surprised me. 90%? 90%. Yep. Yep, it's one of the socially, it's the most consumed and the most socially accepted stimulants in the world. So, you are not alone out there, Sherry. Um, So, we have, um, you know, I guess part of the question is how much is too much? Um, And there are a lot of studies that show that up to 400 milligrams a day 
is safe and does not have uh, deleterious effects, health effects. Um, and so sometimes even calculating um, based on your weight, like they recommend 2.5 milligrams per kilogram per day. And so, you know, one pound has 2.2 kilograms. So basically, rather than doing a bunch of math, if you have, if you weigh 150 pounds, you're going to, the recommended dose is of caffeine a day is a little bit over that, like 170 milligrams. So rather than doing all converting kilograms to pounds and da, 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 um, you can just know that probably a little bit above your weight is a safe dose in milligrams per day of caffeine. So that's specifically for caffeine. So, um, and, you know, you know, there are all these caffeine, high caffeine drinks now um, that people use for energy and to stay up late and study and all that stuff. And oh, comedians drink it in the yeah. back of a green room. It's there's always Red Bull. I've never had one. Yeah, but so it was frightening. And Red Bull, I have the a, a caffeine list has eighty milligrams of caffeine, but a five hour energy drink, you know, those mm-hmm. little tiny drinks, mm-hmm. has two hundred and fifteen milligrams of caffeine. And guess how much cocaine has? Lord, what? <laughs> 288. So that five hour energy has close to the amount of milligram, uh, caffeine milligrams as a, as, um, cocaine? An ounce of cocaine. I did drink a five hour <laughs> one time coming over the mountain uh, from Asheville to Knoxville. And I, I don't know, I guess I'd had a show or something. And I thought my eyes were shutting and I stopped at some little exit. And thought I was scared to death, I, like I was buying cocaine, and I bought one of those and drank it. But it got me home. My heart raced out of my body, and I don't think I slept <laughs> that night. But I had to do something. I was going to get you an accident. You weren't going to make it home. Yeah, Mm-mm. there's a, a energy drink called Spike Shooter. I don't, I've never seen that. I don't. I don't know that drink, but it has 300 milligrams, so it actually has oh, more mercy. more than an ounce of cocaine pretty interesting um i know we know people drinking that going out clubbing is that what young people do yeah i think um and they also use it to counteract the sedative effects of alcohol oftentimes Um, they'll drink energy drinks um to (sighs) offset that so so young people especially young males are the most um common consumer of those high energy drinks um but 150 million people in the U.S. drink coffee on a regular daily basis. And um, worldwide, that accounts for 71% of coffee consumption. So, Americans know how to drink their coffee, for sure. So, coffee consumption is higher than in men than women, and in smokers versus non-smokers, and lower in the African American population compared to the white population, and um, you know, soft drinks are another source of caffeine. Um, and you know, I think some people always assume that like a lime, lemon lime kind of drink, soda drink is caffeine free, but there are some drinks like that like orange soda has caffeine in it and so you really need to look at the label if you Mm -hmm. want to know uh, content of caffeine Um, and most sodas have i have that here well it looks like 40 to 80 but you know if you're drinking five six seven sodas a day which and you hear people doing that all the time yes exactly and i don't you know i can't imagine that but (laughs) You know, yeah. I love a Diet Coke. I know. And I, and I try not to, but I can't imagine if I drank seven a day. Yeah. Well, there is such a thing as caffeine toxicity, and that has been on the rise basically since the advent of energy drinks. So, um, yeah. And some, you know, some of the serious side effects of high caffeine amounts, especially if you have 
some underlying conditions are things like atrial fibrillation, which is a, a abnormal heart rhythm that can increase your risk for stroke. And um, it also can um, cause seizures in high, in high amounts. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it's, it's pretty serious if you're drinking a lot of caffeine. So. Do you think that caffeine causes hormonal imbalance? Well, one thing that is interesting in terms of hormones, um, and I don't, I don't know of a, if it actually changes hormone balance, but they have seen in women who take hormones that if they drink caffeine and take hormones, they're actually at higher risk for um, Parkinson's disease. Oh. So, and they don't see that in women. They actually see a decrease in Parkinson's disease risk in women who don't take hormones. And I, that those are just the outcomes of the studies. I don't know exactly the mach- mechanism of that, but um, they have seen that correlation of women and with hormone replacement um, who drink caffeine. And I don't know the amount of caffeine that, that was in that study, but they did see higher incidences of Parkinson's disease in those women. Hmm. So that's the only hormone correlation I know about. Um, and in terms of Sherry's question about acidity, it's interesting because... Um, I know that that can cause a lot of stomach upset for some people. And so certainly if it upsets your, upset your stomach, you shouldn't drink coffee. But um, they have seen that um, caffeine and specifically coffee actually helps several GI problems, like gastrointestinal problems. Um, for instance, it lowers uric acid, so we have fewer um, episodes of gouty arthritis. Um, it we see lower levels of colon cancer with coffee drinkers. We see oh. low, yeah, huh, yeah, and we see it, that it help caffeine specifically versus just coffee. But caffeine is a smooth muscle stimulant, so it can actually help constipation. Um, and it's also been seen to sh- coffee specifically been seen to help um, decrease risk for developing liver cirrhosis. Huh. So there are a lot of GI benefits, but I would say, it, it, I guess to an- to Sherry's to answer Sherry's question that certainly if you get an upset stomach if you're drinking coffee, this don't do it you can if you want to get a little caffeine you could get a little caffeine somewhere else like do take some tea or some black tea something that doesn't upset your stomach um and we have seen um with caffeine in particular um a lower risk of different cancers uh in people who drink uh or take in caffeine daily, including breast cancer, oral cancers, liver cancer, colorectal cancer, endometrial cancer. So sort of, I know. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting, I think. Have you ever heard of people um, having, um, my sister has always had like dense breast, and they'd have to do, um, mm. Like she'd have a little cyst, and they would mm-hmm. say, "Stop drinking caffeine." Yeah, it so that's does, something that aggravates it, that. Yeah, it does worsen fibrocystic breast disease. So if you're drinking a lot of caffeine and you have a lot of breast tenderness on a regular basis, you probably should be cutting that out or reducing it at, at the very least. Um, so that's a good point, Leanne. You need to be aware that it's going to trigger that, and and people also can develop a dependence for caffeine. I'm sure most of our listeners are probably aware of that, but, um, you know, and signs of, we can actually have withdrawal symptoms if you stop ca- caffeine abruptly. And that the most common uh, symptom is headache. You can get flu-like symptoms. You can get just fatigue. 
um, just decreased energy, not as alert, you're sleepy, um, poor mood, like depressed mood, irritability, foggy thinking, nausea, muscle pain. So um, typically those, those symptoms w- can start you know, within 12 to 24 hours after not having caffeine and will often take up to nine days to resolve the withdrawal symptoms. I mean, if you remain off caffeine. Um, so important to... I've been through that. I think when I, my first baby, I think. I remember, I mean, with probably with every pregnancy, I would go off and just take to the bed. I mean, because it's awful. That withdrawal is awful. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, so um, I hope that answers that question, Sherry. Uh, We're going to take a little break right now, and um, when we come back, I'll talk a little bit about um, mushroom supplementation and what that can do for us. Okay, we're going to talk about care of vitamins. And uh, I am so tickled. I got mine in the mail. Yep. And, um, okay, let me tell everybody what this is. Care of is a wellness brand that makes it easy to maintain your health goals with a customized vitamin plan that helps you feel your best today and supports you long term. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I got the package, I thought that was so cute. Yep. And it, your recommend that, okay. So you take a quiz, online quiz. Uh, it takes about five minutes. I love the quiz. Everybody needs to go take that quiz. (laughs) Yeah. Did you think that was fun? Yeah, I think it's really good. And for one reason, I think it's really excellent. And I found myself doing this is it makes you evaluate your health, your state of health. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They ask and you, it, they, they ask, ask you, you questions. They're just like, well, oh, yeah, do I do what that? What are you concerned about? <laughs> exactly. What are you, uh, yeah, what do you want to work on? What are you, because I thought it was interesting, hair, nails, sleep, energy, Bladder. I, I wonder if you can overload because I put down all of them. <laughs> um, but okay, so you take this five minute online quiz that asks you questions about your diet, lifestyle, and health yep. concerns to help address your specific wellness goals. And I think everybody ought to go on there and do it. It was very interesting. Okay, and very easy, and it takes less than five minutes. And then when you get your package in the mail, you your recommendation, recommendations come in a daily individual wrap packet that are perfect for getting back into a routine. And I got to tell you, yeah. I like that. Yeah. And it's it's a darling little pack that's got holly in on it. <laughs> and my five vitamin supplement or the pills, my all my supplements that they curated for me. And I, and I can just take it in one swoop. Yeah. Yeah, I think there there are a couple of things I would say as a as a nurse practitioner. Um, it's easy to fall out of a routine, and anything you can ha- have set up for you that keeps you in a routine is really needed. So, having those little packets and it has a little daily saying on it, quote, mm-hmm, cute, uh-huh. yep, and. It just keeps you in the routine because it's easy. You just pull out a packet and read your little saying on it and tear it open and take them. Yeah, and I travel and I go back and forth to take care of my parents or if I'm going somewhere to work, I can just take the packets for the day yeah. for how many days I'm going to be gone. It's really easy because yeah. I end up throwing a bunch of big jars, bottles of stuff <laughs> and wallering that everywhere and then I end up getting tendonitis and then you have to... <laughs> Get write me a thing for me to go to my PT, who I love, <laughs> by the way, Justin, love him. We like to talk about our television shows. But anyway, okay, and also, um, as the seasons change, I thought this was interesting. Mm-hmm. As the seasons change, it's important to get ahead of taking care of your immune health. Yeah. And it so, what about that? Well, I think that's important. And I also, you know, back to the quiz, you know, Patients are always asking me, what should I take? What supplement should I take? And I always encourage a focused approach to vitamins rather than just yanking everything off the shelf that says it helps fatigue or whatever. You know, it's it's much better to have a focused approach. And that quiz really helps you 
get a focused approach to your daily supplements. Right. It's like a one-on-one consultation with a nutritionist, mm-hmm. all without leaving your house. Yeah. How fun is that? Fun. Uh, I know. I love stuff like this. <laughs> and then, and so they sent me a whey protein that I can have after I exercise and uh, some hydration packets. I mean, there was there nifty, nifty stuff in my in my package. And I've enjoyed all of it. Everything tastes good. And good. I know. They're easy to take. It's, it's super easy. Mm-hmm. So for our audience, for, yes. you get 50% off your first care of order. Go to takecareof.com slash sweaty50 and enter code sweaty50. That's good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For 50%, 50% off. off. 50%. Uh-huh. For 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com slash sweaty50 and enter code sweaty50. That's 5 0 for 50% off. You got to try it. I know. I really need to. Yeah. I've been taking my vitamins. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I am going to, we are going to talk a little bit about some uh, mushroom supplement, but I did want to add about caffeine that I neglected to do in the first part of the episode, that there are some uh, negative impacts with some compounds that are in coffee specifically. Um, One of them is that uh, in coffee and black tea, there's a a substance that can actually raise homocysteine levels in the blood. And we I know we've talked about homocysteine before in an episode probably a long, long time ago, but um, high homocysteine levels can increase your risk for clot formation. So there is that compound in there that can raise homocysteine levels. Um, there's some other compounds in coffee that... Um, that decrease the production of a protein that actually suppresses tumor formation and it also depresses the enzymes that repair dna so that's where they think that some of those compounds can be carcinogenic because you're suppressing some of the functions that help seek out and destroy um cancerous or abnormal cells so um also um a one compound in coffee can also possibly raise ldl which is your bad cholesterol and lower hdl which is your good cholesterol and there are some compounds in coffee that can possibly bump up blood pressure so those are all things to take in consideration too and i do want to also mention that the antioxidants that are in coffee do pass through coffee filters so oh yeah oh good to know yeah it is. so is it so would you tell people i mean if if you drink it in moderation a <laughs> cup or two in the morning yeah. you're okay yeah you're okay you're not doing anything horrible no Okay, no, but if no. you sit and drink two pots and yeah. smoke a pack of cigarettes with it. Yeah. <laughs> like my Uncle Lester, God rest his yes. soul. Yeah, and in those um, people. That, that's not good. Yeah, yeah, and those people, they see more bladder cancer, actually, smokers and coffee drinkers. But, um, yeah, so a lot of these studies are on people who drink six, seven, eight, nine cups of coffee a day. So one or two cups of coffee are you know, you're, you're going to get some antioxidant benefit, some caffeine benefit, and unlikely to get the harmful effects that I just talked about. So, so everybody can calm down about that. Not yeah, worry. You know, I would say when like Starbucks opened, uh, you know, a lot of people drink coffee in the afternoon for a lift mm-hmm. and I just can't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep for two days. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are, it causes palpitations, poor sleep, anxiety, heart racing. They they just can't, you know, they can't tolerate much caffeine at all. And part of that might be um, the metabolic pathway that caffeine goes through in the liver. Um, you can have genetic 
variations in your body. You have, can have genes that have some variations in them that um, affect that pathway. So the, the caffeine would stay in your body longer than somebody who doesn't have that variant, if that makes sense. So you, you may have a pathway, vari- a genetic variant that Im- impacts that pathway so that caffeine stays in your system longer than the mm-hmm. average Joe. No pun intended. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With the average Joe. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and all these um, sugary drinks, that's not good anyway. I mean, I love a good pumpkin froth, but that, you know, I watch my kids get all that stuff and... They don't do it often, but yeah. you know it costs six dollars, and it's we got <laughs> eleven eleven hundred calories in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of those, well, a lot of those really sweet coffee drinks are heavily laden with calories for sure. Well, when I'm in Los Angeles, all the the Hollywood people drink um, tea, green tea, mm. instead of coffee in the afternoon. Yeah, and that's a good option too. Well, they, you know, that's they're detoxing. Yeah. <laughs> so what's what you have to do when you live in LA to yeah. detox? But I do love a good tea, <laughs> and I, I love too. a. I'm starting to enjoy more of like chamomile and and, um, you know, there are teas that have got a little valerian root in them at mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're relaxing, like a sleepy you know? time tea. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm. And then maybe a little dab of magnesium powder in it. Yeah, that's a good mix. Yeah. How is your sleep Relax these your days? Are you, are you sleeping better I mean, these days? it goes back and forth. I it know. goes back and forth, you know. I know. So, um, in answer to Sherry's question about mushrooms, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about mushroom. We can maybe do that on another sh- show. But I, I don't know what product she's referring to. A lot of people take uh, reishi mushroom supplements. You know, mushrooms have been used for generations, generations, uh, mostly in in Asia uh, for medicinal purposes. So this is nothing new, but it's it's a newer trend right now. And you know, some people take it for just general, you know, heart health, lung health, kidney health. I mean, they're taking it for immune support. Um, so it. It does have antioxidant pr- properties. It can help s- uh, support immune system in that way. Um, so, again, certainly if Sherry's found a good product that is tasty and she enjoys drinking, that that would be a really good option. So, is Sherry talking about, and I think I've seen them at Whole Foods, but there's a mushroom type coffee? Yeah, it's like it's a coffee, coffee substitute. Beans. Yeah, coffee substitute. But it's made with mushrooms. Correct, Amundo. Oh, yeah. wonder what that tastes like. I know. We Dirt need. or wonder, <laughs> wonder what that... <laughs> I've never had that. Tastes more like dirt than coffee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, but that's something to try. That'd be interesting. Yeah, and some side effects or risks um, of using mushroom supplements, specifically reishi, is certainly you can get dry mouth, dry eye, dry nasal passages uh, with supplements uh, containing reishi mushroom. Um, Some more serious side effects can be dizziness, itchiness, rash, headaches, stomach upset, nosebleeds, probably from dry nasal passages, uh, bloody stools. So certainly if you're developing side effects and you've recently started a mushroom supplement, you need to get, stop it and get that checked out. So, um, but I know it's a really, really popular item right now uh, for immune system health, especially during COVID. Mm-hmm. A lot of wellness people are recommending a mushroom supplement for that very purpose. I've heard our darling friend Eddie at yes. Eddie's Health Shop here mm-hmm. in Knoxville, Tennessee, mm-hmm. he got COVID. Oh, and- no. Yeah, he did. He's done fine now, but um, and he talked about it on his Facebook page. He was precious oh. and talked about his journey. You know, he's Eastern European. His accent's so sweet, and he went through his whole journey and what he felt. And he talked about um, uh, his bowels. He, I mean, <laughs> Eddie put everything out there, and he was darling. But he said that he was taking uh, mushrooms 
something, a mushroom supplement mm-hmm. for immunity and zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D. Good, All the yeah. stuff we've already talked about. Yes, so, indeed. But Eddie's done great and is running 20 something miles a day. Wow. <laughs> something wow. crazy. Wow. He's recovered nicely, it sounds like. That's, he has, you know, but he was. Good. He said the minute we found out about this, though, he started training. Mm. And I was I was like, oh, Eddie, mm. I yeah. suck because I didn't <laughs> I didn't start training when I heard about the COVID. <laughs> but he was a division one athlete. So yes, that's what they do, go. I guess. That's right. They never stop. Uh, so. Well, so I hope that answers Sherry's question and uh, maybe she can uh, shoot us her product that she loves 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 uh on the facebook page and make sure to go to the facebook page to uh leave comments or questions check out our merchandise check out videos that you and tess have done leanne of tess have done so um it's a good place to get all kinds of sweaty and pissed information is it not (laughs) (laughs) so check out our facebook page and um again i would always put a blog on our webpage, sweatyandpiss.com, uh, with supplement information, recommendations, you know, whatever we talk about, I try to put a, a blog page in there. So if you have questions about the episode, you can always check it out there. Um, and I also want to thank Care of for sponsoring today's episode. Yes. Indeed. Well, I hope you all stay well and stay safe, and we will see you next time. Yeah, enjoy a cup of coffee. (laughs) Bye. Bye Bye-bye.